if you start leaving, 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 leaving chances, people are saying, well, wait a minute, what, what, what's happening here? But against, against the other players, it's, it's no problem. Let's have a look at this. It's his finger moves the red. There we go, watch this again. Watch the back red there where Marco's finger is. See, moves it forward, touches the red. That's a foul. Turning point in the match was at 5-4. He was in the balls at 5-4 and Paul Collier, the referee, missed a blatant push. Uh, it was quite obvious to me and to anyone that was watching at home, they could probably, probably see that, no problem. Well, I thought he fouled that then. No. I thought he hit the white twice, did he, John? Mm. Well, referee Paul Collier was having a good close look. Let's have, that. Let's just have a look. Mm. It was a big stage of the match, considering I put him under pressure last night to get back into it at a 5-4 and you know, if, if, he, if the referee rightfully calls a foul there I have a good chance of going 5 each and the match is different but he went on there to pull away to 7-4 that was massive and I looked at Paul, I looked at Michaela who was marking the match I uh, spoke to Griffiths uh, at the interval, he was commentating on it completing foul he said you know, uh, anything that Terry says I, I trust and you know, I was pretty confident at the time that it was a foul Competition when a black was potted, the winning black, but keep your eye on the white ball because no one saw it at the time. It hits the rest that's left on the table. So although the result stood and still does, Neil Folds and Jimmy White. Firstly, Neil, have you ever seen that before? Um, no, I haven't. I noticed the referee looked, um, he spotted it as well at the end, didn't he? I, I just think that everything has to stay as it is, you know. The, 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 clearly the ball wasn't going in. Foul there. Red, red definitely moved there. It's not, it's not been called, but that was a foul. Let's have a look at this. It's his finger moves the red. There we go. Watch this again. Watch the back red there where Marco's finger is. See, moves it forward, touches the red. That's a foul. One. Oh, Seems to be an extra ball on the table. Where's that come from? <laughs> that is the that is a tremendous stroke. I like that one. I've not seen that one before at all. <laughs> oh well, that is it. Nigel Bond gets revenge for last year. This time he beats Dennis Taylor, and a warm handshake from Dennis. Nigel goes through. Stephen Lee got wrong, missed the part because you never quite know where the red's going to go. Uh, it went into the pack. Still not quite over the line in this frame. We need to be 11 and you just feel that... 39. Absolutely guaranteed to win the frame of this visit where the balls are. 
It is until it gets rid of the red below the pink, isn't it? That's, I mean, the pink is only available in two pockets at the moment. We'd like it to be available in all four of the high-scoring pockets. And until it gets rid of that red, it's not quite straightforward. Now here, we see now, I think that, well, John is querying the respotting of uh, the pink. He didn't actually go that time around. And he's already potted it in that pocket two or three times. He's not allowed to do that. He's just, he's just potted the blue. He's not just potted the pink, is he? He's just potted the blue in the middle pocket. He can't move a ball after, after a shot's been played. Stephen Lee is entitled to, to, to have a word with him about that. That shouldn't be allowed. We've got a chance now. This is the blue he's played. So, also, that, that means now the pink's out of play. I did not... And all of a sudden, he's asked to have the pink to be respotted. No, you're absolutely right. That is wrong. There's no way that he can do that. Can ask, but the referee doesn't have to uh, do anything about it. He basically has said that it, it was incorrectly respotted, but unfortunately, it's hard luck. I've never seen that before in all the years I've been commentating. And that did indeed take John 7 5 in front. But um, what did you make of what was a slightly controversial incident? In the end, it didn't actually have any bearing on the outcome of the fray, Steve, but uh, rather unusual, that wasn't it? Yes, uh, and I think it's explained by Neil and John. You know, once the, the pink's been spotted and then other shots are played, it, it's condoned that the, the exact position of the pink is there, even if it's not perfectly on the spot. Um, so to ask for it to be respotted, the referee has to say no. I can I can mark it and clean it, mm -hmm. and put it back exactly back where it was. So uh, uh, Olivia will be uh, back in the pre in the play uh, referee's room, maybe whipped to an inch of life <laughs> to make it <laughs> the smallest of mistakes that we can then just put up there. The rest of the referees will go on strike, and we've got all held. <laughs> I don't think it's that serious, or, but it was a mini boo boo on the blue blue. Just fortunately, blue -blue. Oh, fortunately, it didn't make any difference to the. To the no, uh, no, it didn't really make any difference. But it, it's something that. You know, it's happened to me before where a referee has spotted the black and all of a sudden you go back to playing the black again and it's touching. Uh, and I asked him to clean it and uh, he, he actually looked to see where the black was. He says it's touching the red, so he put the marker down and put it back. But I said it was already on the spot, but he says now I have to put it back in the position because you've already played an extra shot. And just as Willie said, once you play another shot, uh, then the positions uh, have to remain the same course but it's key to get this red in a position where there's a possible chance of a free ball and that would be right behind the pink and brown he's not got the side on the cue ball John Higgins he's got the red in a good position as well if that had been tight behind the black he could have had a few balls out of this a few free balls but I think you can almost see the red yes although just 46 in it with only 35 left on the table a snooker it's on this side yeah, of it, Mark. We're going to leave it. I'm One sorry, we're going to leave be it enough. because of the shot you're playing. Right, OK. <clears throat> well, I know well, what Alan Chandler was saying, <coughs> but I don't agree with it. If he wants the ball clean, and I don't care where there is, get it clean. Well, absolutely. What if he's playing a thin cut for a pot or something? Exactly. That's taking the rules to the extreme. He wasn't trying to cheat, because he could see it anyway. Well, at least I thought Half. he could see it. All of a sudden, now the free ball's on. And the free ball's on. John Higgins, five. And I'm just wondering... And a free ball. Yes, free ball. So that one snooker. It's 41. There's 35 on the table, but there is 43 on the table. Because the colour he nominates will count as a red with colour to follow. The red just above the black available. Trying to come down for that red by the black spot and hasn't quite come far enough so 13. looks like just the safety. Well he was going to play the plant but that's so dangerous. That would have been just frustration. Great recovery. Great recovery. 14. And if he decides to take the brown on, it's a real thin shot, but no thinner than that. Well, he's fouled there. He's caught the red with, with his cue. Never saw it. I'd like to see that again. I'm sure he caught the red with his cue. Let's see this again. Just watch 18. the cue here. But it wasn't spotted. 
That's about it. Well, this is the shot again. Just watch the cue. Cashes are red. Seven to three. made a massive difference, self-evidently, because he made a 73 break and he's levelled up at 3 all. And then into the next frame, there was an incident. I want to get your view on it. Let's have okay. a look and that? you can talk us through it, Ronnie. This is from frame number six. Not another incident? Oh, what's happened here? What? What's happened? Anything there? No. What's happened here? Okay, now, no one spotted it, bizarrely, apart what's from happened? Dave Hendon. And I'll show you again. We'll show you from the first angle. Let's, let's play it one more time from the first angle. Even the referee didn't spot it. You didn't spot it. Only Dave What's Hendon happened? got it. Tell me, so I'm... watch your cue and watch what? the red below the pink. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Didn't even... I, I, yeah. Watch your language, Ronnie. I do apologise. Sorry, 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 okay sorry. If anyone's offended by that, it sorry. is live TV. I do apologise. Yeah, no. Didn't even see that in a million years, mate. Of course not. Wow. 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 Okay, listen, we know you didn't see I'm it happy to go and play the yeah. match again if they want to, you know what I mean? If that's sort of like, but no way in a million years. I mean, that's the last thing in a million years, yeah. Okay, I mean, listen, no one spotted it out there. No, no, You didn't, no, get it. Listen, you didn't no. see it, only Dave Hendon saw it, and then we no, saw about yeah. eight replays. Well, I wish Dave Hendon would have said something and stopped the match, to be fair. That's what they should do. He should have stopped the match, really. Why? Why he hasn't done that? Fair comment. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I mean, I don't think the commentator can stop a well, match. Well, you can. You can just say, look, you know, there's a foul gone on there, like, call a halt to the game. I've done it before. I've said, I think it was in commentary, something went on. I went, hold on, he hit that ball, and they looked back and they said, yeah, he did, did it. Okay. Well, I, I'm being told that, you know, the, the commentator has no control over the match. It's down to the match official to see something, mm. and it wasn't seen. Get the between us. Yeah, there's one there looking to. You make one mistake, you know, that's. Uh, you don't have to make a mistake. No, it's no, no, we have to be sure. If you're, if you're going to say, then you're going to tell him, frame three, I'm going to lose. Yeah, but uh, I mean, what if he gets a good break? And I mean, what's the risk factor? I mean, no, you can, you, you can mess. If you start leaving, 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 leaving chances, people are saying, well, yeah, no matter what, what was happening here? But against against all players, it's, it's no problem. So you, you narrowly miss this ball go to pocket, and that's it. It's a little two inches out of position. You know, and then a bounce off the top cushion or something like that, and then suddenly you, you're on a very difficult black, which is in any normal run of the day, you know, that's. I don't know the sport that well, but I mean, what I'm saying is you can miss one. I mean, you can't keep missing it. You can. You can, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. Well, that's your, that's your, that's your side that you've got to do with that. So as long as we agree on that. Another thing is, is, is it would be World Series only. How how are we going to do the payments like is, that? As, as you put, you know, you, you, you name the company that you want, you stick the logo on, and then you get... See, the problem with that is, what, what figure did we agree? Uh, uh, was, it, yeah, was it net 200, 300? Go on, I'll look at it. Was it 200, 300? What was it? I mean, it was... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'll go for three. <laughs> uh, it was three. Yes. Was that The money doesn't exist. Yeah. Right, okay. So, so we don't want to go for our box, you see. We, we can't have it. <coughs> if we sponsor you, then it's... Uh, yeah, right. Right, so you can't do that then. You can't. Well, we can, but it's a bit more problem for us. It's no problem for you, it's problem for us, it's got to go for our. Yeah. Box of the books and pay tax. More of them, yeah. It's hassle for us. Easy if it's cash. You know, I'm thinking to myself, how do you ask for 200, 300,000 pounds, euros coming in? Let's agree the figure. Yes, yeah, so let's agree the figure. You've agreed four, four frames during the year what? Right? We're agreeing the figure now. What, what, what's the figure we agree? 300. 300. Sorry. thousand euros is agreed. Agreed? We have agreed that. Now the mechanics are paying. Have you paid? Yeah. No, I've got a property in Spain. I'm thinking myself. If you've got a small mortgage or something on the property, you can pay it off. Or the baby. Look how you're prepared to look now, but if you paid it off, and I want some. Or. So, 
four frames. One per. Yeah. Okay. You can tell us whatever. We're not going to discuss it ever again. You just signal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 And yet, on such an important day, this sport has been stunned by allegations concerning its number one player, John Higgins, the last man to lift that trophy. A tabloid newspaper today alleges that the three-time world champion and his manager, Pat Mooney, agreed to accept hundreds of thousands of pounds in return for arranging the outcome of four frames in different matches in the coming year. There is no suggestion or evidence that John Higgins has ever fixed a frame or match in the past. Well, about an hour ago, I spoke to the chairman of World Snooker, Barry Hearn, and asked him about the latest developments in this story. This morning we've issued a press announcement to say Firstly, that we are aware of the News of the World article and clearly we take it very seriously. Pat Mooney has tendered his resignation as a director of the WPBSA with immediate effect and, and that has been accepted. And John Higgins, the current world number one, has been suspended from any future WPBSA events pending the instigation of our normal disciplinary process. And that process will be headed by David Douglas, the former Chief Superintendent of Scotland Yard, who heads up our disciplinary action alongside the company solicitors with uh, an instruction from the board to deal with this in the most expedient manner possible because we want this matter dealt with as quickly as possible. Can you give us any time scale on this investigation, Barry? It's difficult to give you an exact time scale, but what I will undertake that it will be in days and weeks rather than months and months. Um, I take the view this is a very serious matter. It's a matter that affects the integrity of the sport potentially. And therefore, we have a responsibility not just to our snooker fans, our broadcast partners, our sponsors everywhere, anyone associated with the sport. This has to be dealt with quickly, and it will be. Barry, two players in the past have been banned for five and eight years, respectively. Were John Higgins to be found guilty of these allegations, what would be the consequences which might befall him? It, it would be wrong of me, Hazel, to, to try and judge the length of bans. It's, it falls outside my responsibility. This would come under David Douglas and the disciplinary panel. But clearly, you are, if allegations were founded, you will be talking about a very, very, very lengthy ban. Barry, you've just come onto the board. You have big plans for the sport. I wonder how this story and its potential repercussions affect your plans now. Will you walk away from the sport? Well, I have advisors that are advising me to do exactly that, but my reaction is to stick with the ship, and I believe in this sport, Hazel. I believe in the integrity of all sport, and I think that players and fans must understand that under our leadership that we won't tolerate this type of behaviour. I've been quoted as saying that any penalties will be harsh and brutal. I think they need to be. Clearly, it's a body blow to my plans. Uh, I'm old enough to take that on the chin and move forward. But it is one of the most disappointing days I've had in 35 years of dealing with the profession. I am pleased that sports resolutions and the WPBSA have concluded after a thorough and fair investigation that I was not guilty of any dishonesty and had no intention to fix a match and no intention to do anything corrupt. If I'm guilty of anything, it is of naivety and trusting those who I believe were working in the best interests of Snooker and myself. I accept that I should have informed the WPBSC officials about the events in Pierre immediately on my return to the UK. ...to Stephen Lee to keep his chances alive. Ken, of course, has already won one match. He's got at least a point here. He's now after that second point for a 4-2 win. Meantime... In the match on the other table, also a Group 2 match, I can tell you Marco Fu has now taken three in a row against Joe Swale. So he's secured his first point of the tournament, having lost 4-2 to Ken yesterday. Mm, caught that a little bit on the thick side. It's a bad mistake, and I'll tell you what, if mm, Stephen comes out this three, three apiece, he'd be delighted, and Ken Doherty would be very disappointed.
It's course. been a pretty entertaining match, actually. Certainly a few breaks been rattled in. Not finished Five. yet. No, perhaps you're right there, Mike, although Stevens left that a little short for the blue. I wonder whether he'll uh, change plans and go for the pink here. Played that well. Nice touch. Now, does the pink spot? If it doesn't, it'll go behind the pack. Mm, that could make a difference. Mm. On that red, intended red. Still got one left of the black. Well, there you go, it's blocked it. The straighter red would have been better, of course. It would have been able to get onto the black. Thank you. There you are, the pink going as near to its own spot as possible in a line down the centre of the table. All of the spots being occupied. Yeah, that well, wasn't a real problem, though. That's not too clever. Wanted to be a touch higher with the white. Just glance off the pack down for the blue. Ah, caught them too thick. Yeah, I think he suggests he got a kick there, which threw a different angle with the cue ball. <laughs> Made the difference between being on the blue and not. Him taking anything on here, I'm sure he's going to play a safety. I uh, should play a safety off the green here. Yes, I think he is being tempted with this black mic. Just slightly overcut it. Well, he's played it in such a way, knowing that he was possibly going to block the pocket, which he has done. <laughs> of course, if it had gone in, he could have continued the break. And sometimes when the black finishes over a pocket like that, if there's not immediately a red on, it changes the whole course of a frame. Yeah. That looks pretty good. How we'd like to get a point out of this match. Yes, you would consider that something of a little bonus when he saw Ken knocking in all those nice big breaks and going 3-1 up. To win the last two would be some saving grace, although it would still not necessarily see him qualify. Stephen would have to win his last two matches, I feel. And that would give him a total of five points out of a possible eight. Still not sure that five points out of eight is going to be enough to top the group. It all depends how the other results go. If you get plenty of draws, 3-3 three, three draws, then it just might be enough. Well, Ken plays tomorrow, where well, Stephen doesn't, actually. Ken plays Joe Swale. Stephen Lee plays Marco Fu on Thursday and completes against Joe Swale on Friday. Well, if Ken wins this frame, the group might be all over by then. It's a possibility. If Ken wins this afternoon and again tomorrow against Joe Swale. There's an intriguing battle. Mm. The two Irish men 
Joe had a notable victory over Ken a couple of two or three seasons ago, was it, when uh, he beat him in the final of the Irish Championship. But Ken since then has uh, Joe Swale has uh, beaten him to take the Irish Championship, but Ken has won it for the last two years. Mm, and also. It'll be interesting, the match on the other table, won't he, with Mark Hill leading 3-0. If Joe loses that one, that's a massive game tomorrow for Ken and for Joe. So, this is a very important frame here for Ken Doggerty. If, if he gets a victory here, he's got four points in the bag. And then tomorrow, well, the pressure's on Joe Swale. He hasn't won this frame yet, though. Nope. <laughs> the format throws up all sorts of things, doesn't it? Fascinating. Mm. But anything for an easier life. I think this format has its place in uh, yeah. in snooker, Michael. Although I yeah. still have my reservations personally about it having its place in ranking events. That's another argument altogether. Yeah, Steve Davis said that as well. The format's been a great success over the years in the Premier League. Nicely played, but uh, will he leave the red safe? Oof. No, it's not bad at all. I think he'll settle for that. He will indeed. Excellent. Stephen's just had a look at very closely at that black to see whether there's the possibility, not necessarily with this shot, the possibility of uh, manoeuvring a red and bouncing it, is it in off the black. I'm not so sure that he, uh, he's he got enough room to do that. Well, that was quite a risk. He could sh so easily have knocked the black in. And will the red go past the black now? Not sure. Ken's near enough to know the answer to that question. Well, can he nudge it off the black? <laughs> well, here we go. I think it'll go off the black. Oh. <laughs> It's cleared the pocket, and no great damage done. Will that red go through the gap between the black and the other red, Mike? What do you reckon? I think so. I think it's cuttable. That's the one. There it is. So there was damage done. Oh, that's perfect. Brown or yellow available. Yellow, I think. Better angle to get back to the reds. a nice bounce. Three. He's got choice of two here. I think he'll take the one into the right corner and then get the black back on its spot. Four. Well, you have to say that uh, he's on the cusp of manufacturing a great opportunity here to draw this match and snatch a point. All the Reds in potable positions. Stephen must know wow. that this is a wonderful opportunity. He sat out three frames in the middle of this match, whilst Ken banged in three big breaks. Just 
thought he'd finished a bit straight mm. there, but he's OK. He's got Thanks. the red to the middle. But as you say, Mike, great chance to, to get something out of this match. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Oh. And even worse. Another four Shandoff points given away, although he won't be terribly bothered about that, but he'll be more bothered about actually missing that red across the table. That was a great chance, and he knows it. So, a little bit of a let-off for Ken. And whilst that red is too far to be cut into the middle pocket, I just wonder whether he might be tempted to take it into the corner. Might choose to run through for the black here, but he will be leaving reds to the centre pocket. Take this red on, screw back for one of the bolt colours. Put distance between the reds and the cue ball if he misses. <laughs> Not very near. Red hit the side cushion some distance from the pocket. Mm, not too bad. Just wants to get over the line in this one. He might end up scrambling over it, Mike. Yeah, I put him in a strong position in the group, though. If he, he does, he would. Two wins out of two. He's played the more fluent of the two. Stevens played well in patches, but that middle three, those middle three frames from. Ken were brilliant. Oh, now if that was an attempt at a pot, he was a million miles away. That's got to be about the worst shot that Stephen has played all this match. Ken's just stretching a little bit too much there. He was in danger of slipping. One, the, the one foot that has to remain in contact with the ground was only just there. He might decide to throw this red around the table, try and put the white in the middle of the back cushion. Oh, he's gone for the pot. Ah. Well, that really was... Uh, a risky sort of shot to take on and he might well pay the penalty he was stretching right to the limit there One. well he's thrown Stephen a lifeline Mike and you yeah. never know Stephen might just take it well he hasn't played that well either he played on the brown there he's gone too far uh, if he takes the yellow, he'll be cannon into the green with the cue ball. He might have to take on the more difficult blue. Just enough the side cushion. Well, this has got to go in. Oh. Speaking the lifeline was not taken. And the pendulum in this frame has once again swung the other way. Thirty six points behind, but it's just gone favourite. Especially where all these reds and colours are. Not a difficult ball on the table here. Okay, he needs to clear the pink a little, but this is a great chance to take the match. Eight. That 
long blue. It might just have cost him his chances of qualifying for the semi-finals on Saturday. It's the pink that's slightly awkward. He could play on it here, actually, come off two cushions. Let him stay on the black. 17. He's got to clear that. Mm, Ken very good at making something out of nothing. Uh, within a couple of shots, things might just open up. He's trying to screw into the two reds here. Well, you know he won't be on them. He'd still be on the red, but that's not perfect position. 24. He's gone too far. In fact, it would have been better on this red to nudge the one away from the pink if it had just kept the white a little bit more to the right of where it is now. He could just glance that red, actually, try and stay on the black. This is missable, though. Good shot. 25. Oh, the check side there. Great shot. Looks a little bit straight. He needs some angle on the black to get over to the left-hand side of the table. Well, if it's dead straight, I'll screw it directly back off the side cushion and in behind the two reds. If he's not, he'll just have to bring the white back a fraction and play from one of those reds into the left centre. He's just looking to where, as to where the cue ball would be best for exactly that shot. Yeah, if there's some angle there, it'll just stun up the table a little bit. If it's dead straight, he'll go straight across the table and leave the reds to the right corner. I don't know, can he power this black in? It looks fairly straight. No, has he held the black spot? Hmm. Yes, he has. 32. Well, if you can pop this one into the middle, stay on the black, it's bound to open up the other red. Mm, it is a little tougher than it should have been. Oh, that's a great shot. It's held for the pink, and if he's on it, that's a great shot. Yes, he just had a look at that before he played the shot to see whether he could hold for the pink. Well, that was great thinking. It was, and the pink, of course, will go on to the black spot. Well, now he's got every chance to take frame and match. 39. And like I said a couple of minutes ago, Ken Doherty, one of those players, very good at making something out of nothing. And within a few shots, he's now got the frame winning <coughs> opportunity. That, uh, that red into the middle to stay on the pink was perfection. Could have played that one a little better, though. Uh, just come off the side cushion with the cue ball, leave the white in the middle of the table. Looks like he's standing up past the black, actually. That's perfect. Good chance here for the Irishman to 46. take his seven vi second victory in the group. Yes, that would obviously put him in pole position, although Neil Robertson, of course, lurks, having won his first match 5-1 against Stephen Lee yesterday. Yes, Neil plays Marco Fu tomorrow. That could be one to save it. like the blue. Have a look at the brown now. Round off two cushions. Perfect. Fifty-one. 
Well, he's not quite home and dry yet, but uh, he's certainly gone favourite, that's for sure. Yep, up to including the brown required. 53. And this is fourth half century of the match, one of which, of course, was that 1-3-4 clearance in frame four. Uh, very good in these situations, Ken Doherty. You know, Stephen was thinking, well, the balls are slightly awkward. That's how he works them, but he's worked them very well. And uh, I think Stephen now knows that he's lost this match. Well, this is frame and match ball. 20 points the lead. Yeah, easy blue to follow. It's all over. Uh, I think this tournament is all over for Stephen Lee. Two losses. Mm, no way back from that. 65. Seventy-one. Seventy-eight clearance from Ken Doherty to add to earlier runs of eighty-two, eighty-one. And Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First frame, Stephen Hendry to break. Well, having watched one legend, we're now watching another one, Stephen Hendry. Not the best break-off ever, but the flick on the blue has uh, took the white back into the bulk end of the table. And Stephen Lee, a gentleman that's playing a little bit better this last uh, few months. He's been struggling a little bit with form over the last season and a half, but he is a class player. And this match is a hard one to call. You would say that Hendry is favourite, but certainly not a certainty. Nobody would be surprised if Stephen Lee won. That's how good a player he is. Albeit the black's tight on the cushion, he may risk playing this for the black. Big angle to get round the back if he wants to, to play for one of the bought colours. Went all out for the black, and it could be costly. I think it's the right shot though, Willie. It's, uh, it's the shot he'd play all the time, isn't it? To hold and get the black back onto his spot and get started early on. But he's now left a, a nice easy one for Stephen Lee. What? Of course, the blue been off the spot on the pink. It's not going to be easy. I watched their match in Ireland, which is the uh, first ranking event of the season. It seems about uh, five years ago now, but Stephen Lee beat Stephen Henry there 5 1. Played quite well. Like you say, I think Stephen would be the favourite, wouldn't he, uh, Stephen Henry? Yes, I think Stephen started the season very, very poorly, as did a lot of the, uh, the top players. All struggled earlier on, but he's just found a little bit of form. Well, he didn't uh, look so good the other day in the semi final of the league where he lost 5 0 to Selby, but. So we did play very well indeed, but apart from that match, these last couple of tournaments, he's, he's played more likely by itself. Yes, why do you think the top players now oh. well, tend to start a little bit slower than they used to? I think it's changing the guard, Terry. I think when we went through it, when it was me, you, Virgo, Mountjoy, Fagan, all those, I think you come to a time in your career when the new guard are coming through, and I think we've seen that this last year and a half. You know, the, the likes of the Stephen Lees, Hendrys, um, Peter Ebdens, Ken Doherty. A lot of players, you know, a little bit out of form because the new guard are coming through. And they've got it to do now, Terry, haven't they, to compete with these young guys? Mm. A little bit unlucky. He had to uh, arc the cue ball there to try and get into the reds. I think he tried to go into the main pack. But still, it looked as if he could uh, nudge one red on there, but just the safety coming up now.
Stephen Lee, eight. players are talking that uh, obviously first day on this tournament and the ones that's already been out there and played are saying it's very quick and quite slippery off the cushions it means it's sliding a little bit which is normal for the first day very fast same problem Four. here for Stephen Henry as uh, Stephen Leand is uh, getting one of the big colours into play This is a tough one to play. Always oh, missable when they run the like that. Five. Missed it by a long way though. Hmm, and the other problem of course he was always going to leave the black on the pace he played it if it had got closer than that it had been even nearer the pocket it doesn't make any difference Stephen Lee had a nice red to get started Whoa. is that that's really careless whatever you do when you Eight. play a shot like that don't finish straight on the red on the cushion he feels he had a bad contact but uh, he's having the cue ball clean so we'll have to give him the benefit of the doubt the reason he hasn't played it well let's have a look at the angle what he can do with this well he's got just about enough to run it round Great shot. Good Nine. recovery. little bit lower than he wanted but it's no real 16. problem because he's got reds in the middle pocket as well he would like to have been on the one at the bottom of the bunch and he can still play that one and play into the pack of reds and bring pink into play and should be on pink or black depends on what angle he has on the red in the middle whether he can get it nicely up for a bought color but he's going to have a lot to do with the cue ball to get back onto another red ideally he'd like to stay on the black well that's another bad shot 
17. I don't know whether he feels he's not getting a reaction from the cue ball, but the previous match they were getting through the cue ball okay. I'm sure it's the same set of balls. Well, I don't think it often uh, see that Stephen Lee didn't very often get through the ball, but I think he's having bad contacts. It's the second one. But that really was dead, really, isn't it? The white then is... And you can see what he's left with, very little angle to uh, get on his next red. So looking down 24. the bottom. Nothing available, just the safety. Stephen Lee, 24. You can say it's a little unlucky to push a red over the corner when playing safe, but in saying that, he perhaps should have had a little glance at the pack to make sure that wouldn't happen. So Stephen Lee leads by 27 points, and there could be a few more to come. Playing the plant here and trying to get a good white at the same time. Foul. That's a bad white now, isn't it? Stephen Hendry, four. That's a, a bad mistake. Eight. Well, Stephen Henry's very comfortable down on the black. Fifteen. A bit more centuries than any other player. Quite an, uh, I think it's about seven, one four sevens. He's made in tournament Ooh, play. He hasn't shown that sort of form so far in this match, but it's very early and this is the best chance he's had.
Well, that is a catastrophe because uh, for somebody of Stephen's class not to... 23. No, he was going to kiss that red. He probably felt he had to kiss it full ball and the fact that he kissed it half ball, he's just lost the white. 32 points each, key point of the frame. Stephen Hendry, 23. So both players have had a relatively good chance in this frame and still all to play for. It always takes a frame to settle though. Very rarely does a player get a hundred first frame. Poor safety from uh, Stephen Hendry then. And, uh, this frame, both players have had chances and the quality hasn't been great. Oh, I thought that was in. Can he see it? I don't think so. tend to get this sort of pattern with these top players sometimes if one starts badly then the other one sort of gets affected by it should liven up before long it's a very good shot one she had to play it with a lot of side to get around the black I'd like to have been a little bit closer to the black but it's still very much available in the corner missable this one I know what's going on, Willie. <laughs> Missable? Even you wouldn't have missed that in the 80s. Eight. I wouldn't have gone for it. <laughs> Eight points in front. Needs an angle on this next pink to either move the red off the cushion, which you'll need at some stage, or play for the loose one. Doesn't have the angle no. now to get onto that red that's near the right-hand cushion, so he'll have to play for the one up in the ball carrier. This is not the best shot. I think he played for the red in the right-hand corner. He's under hit it by some two feet. So still neither player settled. Fifteen. And still all to play for the red on the right hand side obviously the key ball see that Stephen's so disappointed because he's not got any sort of angle on the green to be able to get onto the red. The brown's the only one he can get onto the red now, but then he'd have to miss the kiss on the pink and the black. I don't see there's uh, any advantage but to pop the green and play a good safety off the last red. Screw back. 
leave a half ball safety shot. Could play the safety now, but I, I think the three points is handy. Then play a good safety off the red. Done with another two feet of pace in the cue ball because then it would have been a very easy safety shot, red in behind the black, white up into the ball can. But the angle he's got now, he can't do that. This is one of those where almost you can almost play the very close to the pot red, but make sure you get the white up into the ball carrier. The red will stay in slightly open play. He's playing a very thin, that's a negative safety shot for somebody of Stevens' Stephen class. But maybe Four. thought that was the only way out. Well, his tension wasn't to, uh, for the red to cast the pink on the way across, and he's been a little fortunate. He's covered the red. <coughs> Stephen's intention here would be to, for the red off the bar cushion up towards the yellow. Pretty good. Then when he did it straight on, it had gone on to the uh, top left corner pocket, and he's been a little fortunate. <coughs> you might play back through the gap between brown and green here. The key thing is to get a good white here. And he's played it nicely if it's got pacey enough. Well, this will pot, it's not hard enough. This is worth the risk. The cue ball will do well to miss the kiss on the brown and green if he plays it plain ball. So it all depends whether he goes all out for the pot or play as a shot to nothing and try and miss the kiss on the brown and green. If he plays it plain ball, he'll kiss the brown and green if he plays the pot. If he plays with side, he can avoid them. I don't think he went for the pot, really, did he? He played the can and then off the colour to come down behind the black. I mean, it's the second time now he's been very fortunate when he's played a poor shot. But that's how the balls run, as they say. That was a massive stroke, a lot, wasn't it? Missed the pot by a mile and caught the blue quarter ball. see a bit more of that red than I thought from up here. I thought he was playing it thin for a minute. He's played a good shot there. The one thing that's been noticeable in Henry's game the last few months is that his safety has improved a lot. It uh, hasn't been happening in his first frame.
Well, Stephen's had a quick glance at the potting angle, but I can't see the, the value in taking the pot on, so I think he'll play a safety. Well, he's took it on. I, he probably knew he was going to kiss the brown and felt that at least that'll slow the white down. Very risky pot, that one. His turn to get away with it. Two ways you can play this, you can play uh, cushion first, you can play cushion first and send the red up the balk into the table, or you can hit, just try and hit it full ball and send the red there, but whatever happens, you've got to get the cue ball close to the cushion. Well, he is one of the few players that uh, comes down to the side, the side of the table to look what safety shot he's playing. Alan McManus is another one that does that. Most players just judge from where they are at that top side of the table and play from there. It's a good shot. He's using the black, obviously, as a cover on that side of the table. Not a difficult shot here for Stephen Hendry, knocking in the uh, right around the table. Don't think he can get in behind the black. Oh, did he play it in the middle or not? Well, he's got it and he hasn't apologised. What do you think, Willie? Well, I was just what? about to press it here, saying that he could actually hold for the black and play the contact double, but... Yeah, the rule was a little bit fortunate there, but it is on. You see him played a lot in exhibition matches. That is so careless, Stephen. Looking together, I thought it caught the jaw there, and Eight. this is a little bit more tricky now. He's going to have to play this slow with left-hand side, which makes this a, a tricky pot. So you couldn't play it plain ball because it'd have been too Seven. close to the green. He hasn't played that well. He's 21 in front, so he only needs the the green really to put him 24 in front. So he doesn't have to play any heroics getting onto the brown nicely. Very Thank scrappy you. opening frame. Well, there was no breaks of any significance in that game, but Stephen Hendry seems to have done enough to take the opening frame.
it looks for me as if you can hold the cue ball behind the blue and send the brown back down the table. Depends uh, how he sees it. It's a long way for the cue ball to travel back down behind pink and black, but that's another option. No, he just didn't hold it. Didn't get the spin on the cue ball. And he's not happy, Stephen Lee, with uh, the way the balls have been in this frame. There's a few kicks, or it seemed like kicks earlier on when he lost position. Well, the black going there is uh, in, in Henry's favour rather than Lee. Not easy now with the pink and black down this side of the table. Steam need a big target to get to. Now his uh, options are restricted. I think both players will be glad to see this frame over with and get on with the rest of the match. Been running 32 and a half minutes so far. Oh well, that's changed things a little bit. The way the pink and black's gone, will he? Well, there's a chance here. He can actually play the brown in behind pink and black and play thin and try and get the white up in behind the blue as well. He doesn't necessarily have to get the cue ball there. He could play this very thin, white towards the bought pocket off three cushions, and brown in behind the black. He's playing the other way around. He's trying to get the white in behind the black and pink, which is a little bit more difficult. Well, it's a little bit unlucky to catch the jaws, to be fair. Oh, what did he play then? I don't know what he played. I mean, he didn't get near to getting the snooker behind the pink and black. I mean, the brown was uh, always going to come back down the table towards the cue ball. At this moment, Stephen Hendrick not pot the brown to save his life he's had about three goals so far you get this when one player requires a snooker you'd have bet money on Stephen Henry potting that brown if he needed it to win the frame but I don't know, there's something about when your opponent needs one snooker you think well I better make sure of this and then you just don't sort of focus on the shot so he's looking now well, it looked anyway at putting the cue ball onto the uh, knuckle of the middle pocket. If he'll change his mind. He needs to be patient here, Stephen Lee, because if he can get behind that pink and black, I tell you, it'll be a difficult snooker to escape from. Well, I was very optimistic. That wasn't patient, and, and really a very poor shot. Because Stephen Lee is one of the best uh, tactical players in the professional game and he should have just waited there. Four. Well it's certainly not been pretty this opening frame but I'm sure that Stephen Andrew will now keep Stephen Lee sitting in his chair. Stephen Having a glance at the scoreboard the and he has conceded so no breaks of any significance in that. Ryan's break off shot then which is not a good one he's hit the blue and he's given Stephen Lee an immediate chance 
Ray and John there talking about players going out for toilet breaks. JV, I tell you, no one has ever gone out as many times as Big Bill used to. Every frame he used to go out, didn't he? Yeah, he did well with the amount of alcohol he was consuming. <laughs> that had to happen. But uh, if you're going to get sweaty palms, you're going to get it here at the Crucible. And I think that sometimes players just like to go out and just wash their hands. As we said before, this is the big one. And every shot, a pressure one. Well played. Man, two cushions with a little extension on the cue. Like those two reds out of the way. Those ones just above the black. Play a little nudge on one here. That's a lovely shot. Eight. Nine. Maybe a little bit lower than he would like, but a chance here to carry into the back of that cluster. Should still be on the red to the same pocket as the black. Played it nicely. Didn't have to hit it hard, because if he'd have hit it hard, he may not 16. have been on anything, but just loosen the red slightly. 70. He would have been uh, a little bit peeved that he didn't win the last frame because he looks in good touch, Neil, doesn't he? He's playing quicker, I think, than I remember him. I think he should play quickly because you know, he's a very fluent player, but I've seen him get bogged down before. But 24. He's made a conscious effort to just speed his game up. Now he had a very good win to qualify 25. against Judd Trump. He's the up-and-coming player, one to really keep an eye on his. And that was a good win. You would think that that would be the uh, sort of match Stephen Lee should win anyway, but uh, uh, the young players of today, you have to really keep a, a close look at those. Nicely played. A little bit tougher the black than he would have liked because of his proximity to the side cushion, but he only has to roll it in, bounce off the left-hand side cushion for a red into the right corner. Well, it looked as though that all was all he had to do, but well, maybe you can just get through to this oh. red. It's ready played on, but he wanted it straight for the corner. He may be able to Cut it in. Play for a bought colour now, though. Well, that was uh, some shot. Thought he will, uh, when he first hit it, it was a bit of a blur there. All around the table. Look at this. I mean, he's belted this. Well, I think that's what tells us, Neil, that he was uh, looking for another black off the red. Maximum in mind. Well, why else would he play the red like that? I suppose, having played it, a little unlucky to come tight under the, the cushion. And even if he pops the black, I don't know where the next red comes from. To tell you what, to pop that black at that speed and tied on the side cushion is just an example of what kind of a cumin he is. 48. So difficult to get the accuracy. I'm not sure he's on a red still, but I tell you, it was still nicely done. Now, what on earth is he looking at here? Well, you think, you know, I think you're right, John. If he's even considering that shot, 
then he's he's trying to make a maximum, isn't he? Anyone think there was a big prize for a maximum, John? I think there is, isn't there? £147,000. It's tempting. Well, I'm not quite certain what he's playing here. Maybe the double into the other corner pocket, is he? That's what he's tried. Mm. Stephen Lee, 48. Well, I'll tell you what. He's in an attacking mood. Well, that tells me that uh, he fancies trying to make a 147 more than he fancies winning the match because that was the wrong shot, whether he gets away with it or not. Foul. The miss. Stay away. A thin glance there. And uh, as you saw, missed it altogether. It won't be put back. of shots there from Stephen and these are the type of shots that Ryan Day just seems to float in at will just looking to see what sort of an angle you think you'd be looking for an angle on the brown or the green here good straight cue needed and got and possibly now off the brown come off the brown Side cushion, a little bit of side, playing the cannon. Five. Anyway, he got the cannon, but he's not on one. So just to safety. Ryan Day, Just look at that shirt. Uh, not certain, but I think it might be Plymouth Argyle. Well, 
At least the man next to him looks as though he might have a Manchester United cap on anyway, so bringing some sanity to it. Stephen having a look here, of course, he's got a 47 point lead, but he knows the danger if he was to leave Ryan Day a chance of a pot here, that lead wouldn't count for much. Just feel he's going to come off the two cushions and nestle up to the red nearest the top cushion. Don't want to hit it on the way down. Well, that's what he's done, and hitting it on the way down, that red he's closest to may be possible into the far left corner. In fact, I'm sure it is. trailing by 46 points but this is still a pretty good chance to get back into the frame or even win it eight Sixteen. Seventeen. Well, you'd like to take these five remaining reds with blacks, I think, to pull in that move into the game. Play the little cannon on that red, which uh, he's not hit as he, exactly how he meant to. 24. Still could pop that red to the left centre. Just hampered, and that caused the miss. So here's a chance now for Stephen Lee to just uh, finish this frame off. He's got a 23-point lead. Might not be a natural to pop this red to the right middle and come back for the black. I don't see what other colour he could play for. I think the reason he's pointing there, he's thinking if he pops the red to the right middle and screws back, can he get a cannon off the second red, which will take him towards the black? Possibility. It's worth the risk. And if it goes right, it'd be a frame winner. But nevertheless, it went in, and he's on the black. And that frame-winning chance is still there. Yeah. 
Well, the reason he didn't uh, get a good positional shot there, I mean, he's not happy Eight. with the contact, but he didn't pop the black in the middle of the pocket. I think if he had it done, the cue ball would have gone a little bit further up the table and give him a choice of reds, but that frame in chance is looking slimmer. thought about this red but it's very tight so I've just decided now to play safe he had a few chances in the last frame Still didn't take them eight. and it really begins to eat away at your confidence when you're getting good chances and that was a terrific one so you'll have to wait for another one I just wonder if he'll just try and roll this red in. No easy safety shot. That's a beauty. Well, one. he was forced into that, really. I don't think he had any other shot. Yeah, and they're a little bit easier when you're 8-4 in front, aren't they? But that miss, or that missed opportunity from Stephen Lee could be very costly. If Ryan Day was to win this frame, he'd just go one frame away from a place in the second round. First to ten, remember, Four. in these first round best of 19 matches. Just a tricky little cutback, this. And uh, Kubel... Heading towards the bulk colour. Five. Yeah, I didn't really want to put the green away from its spot. It's not impossible to pot, but the fact is he's on a long pink now. Thought he might I'd quite like to leave the pink down that in with the blue there along the cushion. But if he clears up, it's a long way from blue to pink if he knocks the pink in and puts it back on its spot. If he runs far enough, that was an excellent pot on the pink. And I'm looking at his body language, he's not looking too upset, so I can only assume he can get through to this red, the one to the left of the yellow, as we look now. Well, whether he could or not, Ryan Day. he Kill didn't him. get to the potted angle. Well, there's a few ways of looking at this. 20 points in front. If you're knocking the long red, you win the frame. And he's playing the cut. You've got to get a bit of right-hand side on this, I think, to avoid a kiss on the brown when he comes off the bought cushion. Don't want to whip this too thin. Purposely got it too thick. To say the, the danger was if you overcut it, you'd cannon the brown, and the cue ball would have stayed at that end.
Well, it's a stunning long red and one, one that is not unexpected when you know the way that Ryan Day plays. These long straight ones John mentioned earlier, like a penalty kick almost. Although, I don't know if we should mention penalty kicks to John. I'm very pleased that Everton have got through to the final of the Cup. I think uh, they've done very, very well with the injuries that they've, they've had to, to get to the final. And I wish them the look, best of luck in the final. And if you believe that, you believe anything. Good pot on the yellow. It's not going to be the e easiest of clearances here because the blue's tight on the ball cushion. The green's not on its spot, oh. although cleverly playing for the green now. Make it a little bit easier if the green's back on its spot. But you just feel the blue's going to be the big problem because, of course, no matter how he gets on the blue, he's going to have to play it with a little bit of pace to get from blue to pink. Seven. Six remaining colours required. Well, no good. Very short of where he meant to be, and well, virtually impossible to hold this. I mean, he could get somewhere halfway up the table for the blue, but that's about all. That's as, as good as it gets, I think, for position, but I doubt that he'll go for this. Well, he's having a look, so this is a risky one. I mean, it, he could get very close to this and leave it over the pocket. A lot of players would be just hitting this full in the face. Ryan likes it. That was always going to be the worry. Where's his cue ball Ryan going? Day. Well, I think for one moment it might have run behind the thing because you say I couldn't agree with you more now. That was risky. But it's not over just yet because Stephen needs the blue and the pink. And you're not guaranteed to get position off this blue. The best way to play it, and I'm certain the way Stephen will play it, is to play cushion first. And that then will swing the cue ball around the angles, but He's still got to adjust the pace correctly to get position on the pink. Just checking where he needs to hit the cushion. Well, this is where his cue power comes into the equation. He's playing a direct screw, and my word, can he get hold of the ball? That is, you know, I've got to say, that is very, very unfortunate to go in off. Ryan Day, five. Sheer power has got the cue ball there. Well, everything happens, and it always seems to go the wrong way when you need it. And Stephen Lee, at the moment, 8-4 behind, needed a bit of luck he didn't have any so Ryan Day with a chance to go 9-4 in front blue and pink needed he missed it by a country mile and what's he and he's left it on so Stephen Lee has another chance to win this frame and should do this time Whoa. 
this is a comedy of errors now. The Ryan Day, obviously, the shot he had on the blue was always one that you can miss from its spot. That should have been potted. And now Ryan has got another chance. Both players need two balls out of the three. Obviously, blue and pink. Ryan will take a bigger lead. Well, not Five. sure whether that was planned. That cannon on the black, but either way, this is for the frame. All the way, Ryan Day wins a scrappy frame. Stephen Lee gets the first frame after the mid-session interval underway. Back firmly against the wall. Next frame he loses. He's out of this year's World Championship. a possible pot on but if not certainly a, a chance for a safety but I think Ryan may be playing the pot here mm, close enough but not there well in the last frame Neil we saw Stephen Lee make an attempt for a maximum he can pot this first red and get on the black yeah, I mean, the ready went for was it, uh, some kind of a double into a corner pocket when the frame was still live. Obviously, I suppose if he goes on to make it, then no argument. But it also made me think that he didn't fancy winning the match 8 4 down. He's thinking of the big prize for the 1 4 7. There you are. And I wouldn't mind betting he's still thinking that way, but he's got to be on the black if it's going to happen. And I've got a feeling he's gone too far, or his expression certainly made us think that. What's he going to do now? He's not sure he's not going to swerve round and pot this, is he? I don't think that would be... I know it wouldn't be the shot. Actually, it wouldn't take a big swerve, though, looking at it. Just a little bit of left-hand side could straighten the angle. I'm not saying it's the right shot, John, but... Uh, Well, he's uh, played the green, missed it, and Stephen I wonder Lee. if he's left something on. I don't think he's played that badly, you know, Stephen Lee, in this match. He certainly showed signs of playing more positively, but he's not really getting anything for it. Trailing by a wide margin oh. now. Yeah, we we mention many times, don't we, about confidence, and Stephen hasn't had the best of seasons. And you come here with that little lack of confidence, and it's magnified. Eight. Nine. Nice chances for Ryan to build a substantial lead in this frame he needs to book his place in the second round. Sixteen. Seventeen. 
24. Twenty-five. And he played that no Five good. Eight. I mean, he just 25. seemed to quit on that. Never really got through it, which usually is his strong point. He really does get right through the cue ball, but there he overcut it because he hit it all wrong. He's blocked the pocket. That's the only saving grace. Well, I mean, that's unlucky. He's potted the red. He's hit the jaws of the middle pocket, and Cuba's embedded in the pack, which means, of course, the black won't pot. Pink he can one. only play safe off the pink now, he's thinking. So maybe in behind green is the shot. Rain he's played. One. And uh, not completely a snooker, but not an easy escape all the same.
safety short. Leave your opponent with his hand on the table. And then next time you get back, you, you're in trouble. And I'm not quite certain if Stephen's snooker on all balls. Well, Hawkeye says he isn't. Just get to the edge of this red. Where's the cue ball going? Good shot, little tap on the table there from Ryan, and quite rightly. That was a good safety from Stephen. It's funny, you know, you look at the scoreline, 9-4, and yet you look at the chances that Stephen Lee's had to make, this could have been an awful lot closer. But ifs, puts and maybes don't count. First time in this match. I think he'd like to have played the black, but can he get through to the black? Obviously got the pink to the right middle, but if he can get through to the black, then he would clear the pocket for quite a few reds. It depends how you see the shot. Maybe there's a red that will pass the black if he can come down the right hand side of the table. All about judging the pace. Presume the pink is on its own spot. But nevertheless, he couldn't have played that better. That is inch perfect. He's uh, still got a red, but I'd like something slightly easier 50. than what he's left with. I know when you 60. hit the ball hard, you're going to make the pot more difficult, but he's obviously put unintentional left-hand side on that because he's hit the pink so full. 
Amazing. Eight. Nine. Good shot. Good cue power to get the other side of the black, which is where he wanted to be on the angle he had on the red. A lot of work to do, though, with him still well behind. He checked the scores, still 25 16. behind. Can get back into the frame. Whether he can go on and win it from here is another matter. Seventeen. Places in all the world. Twenty to land up there. That's unlucky. <clears throat> Evenly, twenty two. Well, if that goes in off, he's unlucky. That was a pretty wow. good safety shot to avoid the red. So you kind of know it might be on, but I think that was a bit unfortunate to finish with the cue ball going in off. It's not been a lucky day for him. I think at times, I think John said earlier this frame that the scoreboard 9-4 doesn't necessarily reflect the way the match has gone. It's been closer than that. Another terrific long pot, and funny enough, we've been watching a lot of the snooker, and that has been the weakness for most players, the, the long potting. I mean, I remember Ronnie O'Sullivan in his match, he was struggling to get past the 50% mark, but not so the case with Ryan Day. His long potting has been excellent.
4. Ryan Day, four. Well, he didn't particularly fancy that. You could see the way he played it. He's uh, kept the advantage here. And he may have Stephen Lee snookered. It just maybe an edge sticking out that he can get to. If not, well, he can. So it's not the side he wanted, though. He wanted to be, as we were looking at the table there, the uh, the right side is what he wants to be able to hit off. It looks like he's got to play off the left, swing it around the black. And he just missed the black there with a little glance. Just caught the edge of it, but uh, that's better than hitting it half ball or full ball. Yeah, 27 points to lead Ryan Day, and of course this frame takes him into the second round. But if he plays the pot on this red that's just to the right of the black, he's going to be running into the black, you feel, so it's a little bit risky. But as I say, his long potting has been one of his strengths in this match, but... Will he play this one? Well, he played it in such a way he was trying to screw back up the table. Well, he's not the green in, so... It's a little unlucky, but I don't think he's left anything. Well, for once in this frame, a little bit of good fortune for Stephen Lee. Looks as though he may leave that red to the left middle, but it's covered by the black, as you can clearly see. Well, that was a nice result.
call it much too thick. If the red pots pass the blue into the right corner, must be tight. Ryan had a look, but he's not going to play it. Uh, clearly doesn't go in there. So he's playing it bottom left now. Screw the cue ball back down the table. And he does pot some balls, isn't he? But he's not played to his full potential tonight, but he keeps putting really good balls. Yes, and he's on the brink of getting that place in the second round. 26 points to the lead now. So this red and the colour, although if he's straight on the red, he'll have a job getting the colour. The red to go 27 points in front with 27 left on the table. So I would suggest just make certain of the red. Don't try and do anything flash. Because if you hit it hard, you could miss the red. Well, don't listen to me, Ryan. Four. Boy, did he cue that well, Neil. Yes, I mean, I agree with you. Just make sure the red and uh, you're in the driving seat. But he, uh, he doesn't seem to hit the balls very hard to get that kind of power. His cueing is definitely a strong point. And this match is over. Because he's now clearing up. And... Uh, I think that Ryan Day will be quite happy with his form. Nine. He can play better, but I've seen him hit the ball worse than this during the course of this season. He may be just peaking at the right time. He's a very dangerous player, and one that is due a good success. There's Stephen Lee. Well, I think he's played better than the results 14. suggest today. Unfortunately, doesn't count for anything because he's lost. 80. Yes, it's a, on paper a very comfortable win, but it's always a potential banana skin for the seeds in the first round, but Ryan will be very comfortable with this victory. And I think he's got another four days before he plays his next match. He's got time to get on the practice table, just iron out what he thinks may be a few problems. The seed has come through smoothly, as Broderick and Crawford used to say, over and out, 10-4. Higgins has the momentum. Well, I mean, look at Stephen. If he gets a draw out of this, can he still make the semi finals? I wouldn't have thought so. One. Higgins has played. Uh, really well the last couple of frames he's in the groove six Well, talk about the commentator's curse. <laughs> that was an easy ball to miss. One. Does he have the angle here to run this Six. red in and just nudge the one away from the black? Well, if not, he's going to have to find uh, another alternative. 
Well, he's got a slight angle. Well, just thinking about the other one, actually, the left hand red, left, the red left of the black. Stephen Lee, six. Well, I think it's a case of Stephen's got worse and John's got slightly better. Although I suppose there was more excuse for Lee missing that easy ball than there was for Higgins. A couple of shots earlier because uh, he was having to concentrate on a precise cannon for position. Six. If the player asks for the cue ball to be cleaned, it has to be done in his own time. The clock doesn't stop. Again, he's under hit that. I don't know whether this top cushion is a little bit on the soft side. 13. But he's played one or two of those and not quite hit them hard enough. He missed it. Oh. John Higgins, 13. Well, after playing two very good frames, Higgins has missed it. Two easy balls at the start of this one. One. Could be the difference between a win and a draw from Higgins' point of view. Eight. Sixteen. Seventeen. Might still have that the right hand right of the uh, the bunch here. We played that one into the right centre. Well, if he loses this final frame, he'll be annoyed with himself and missing that fairly easy red. It's a... Oh, Stephen Lee, just as I say that, Stephen Lee misses the next red. I was about to say that Stephen didn't Lee, get good position on that, uh, on that red from the black. So he's back to the table. Didn't expect Stephen to miss that one. Been a little bit of bits and pieces in this match, well, Clive, hasn't it? Neither player's really taken it by the scruff of the neck, but John has another chance here. I thought Higgins was going to the way he won the fourth and fifth frames, but uh, eight. There have been a couple of bad errors on both sides in this concluding frame of the evening. No. But if he can win this final frame, John Higgins, he'll be delighted with the win, I'm sure. Fifteen. Sixteen. 
16. Well, the frame is all about this next shot now. If you can get a good split here, it's 4-2 to John Higgins. Well, it's a good split, but now is he on this red, this straight red he wants? Not the one at an angle. 23. Obviously not. Oh, I think he might be playing a safety. That's all he needed, just to be on a red. John Higgins, 23. Good safety. Top two in each five band group to qualify for the semi finals. Big money at stake when it gets to that stage. £50,000 for the winner. Well, just as well, that red didn't run a fraction more. Definitely being on. I can't see Stephen taking that on. He just should clip off this uh, red for safety. Still got a chance to win this uh, final frame, make it three apiece. Even a draw, though, would still leave him bottom of the group with one point. Yes, and only one match to be played. For him, that is, of course. Might seem to take this one on though to the yellow pocket. Only danger is that he will be leaving other reds on. I think he's going for it. Uh, might be the end now of this uh, final frame. Well, I thought it would be, but uh, Higgins has gone off the boil in this concluding frame of the evening. Chapter of accidents. Lots of balls being missed. One. Another chance then. Still not easy to win the frame at this visit.
Well, he's ever hit that. And there's no way you'll set that red on. You'll just play a safety off it. 17. John Higgins, 17. Well, John leads by 29 with a pretty good safety. <laughs> Wasn't quite good enough. That's an excellent caught well. by Stephen Lee. Now, unless he tries to nudge this red off the cushion, he could possibly lead himself across double. Well, that tells me, that tells me that he's trying to nudge this red off the cushion. Looks good. Well, a good effort. It just depends whether it passes the yellow or not. Eight. Don't think it does. I think there's room there, Clive. I think there was just enough room for it to go past that yellow. There you go. You're right, Mike. <laughs> no. It's not ideal on the green here. He'd like to be straight. I think he's just running slightly into the brown. This is a tough pot. Can he get this and get onto the yellow? Well, good shot. Now he's got every chance to pinch this final frame. And this would be a great visit because John played it a reasonable wow. safety there. It was an excellent red to get in. That's not great though. 14. Well played. Excellent. 17. He still needs them all, but this would be some finish. 21. And he's just overrun the cue ball again here. It's okay, because the pink's higher, it's off its spot, so he can hold the white in the middle of the table. He's going around. Try to get close. Not bad. 36. Still needs pink and black. This is some uh, break here. Saving the best or last. Stephen Lee, 26. Can you believe that? After all that hard work and a terrific break, he's missed that pink. John Higgins only needs this pink. He's had a quick look at this to the yellow pocket. This for 4-2 then. finish to this match climb in the end well it looked as if Lee was going to clear up for three all that's a great shot what about that one then brilliant and that cleverly laid snooker has made him favorite once again yeah and if he misses this if John doesn't hit this pink then Stephen only needs one ball Looks good. Oh, he'll settle for that. Oh, will he? No, it goes. It definitely goes to the middle. I thought he'd push it on far enough. Another chance then. Well, hang on. What's he played there? Six. Complete misjudgment. 
Well, he's played to go around the black, surely. Will he take on the cross double? He might do. Stephen Lee, six. Lee has had two great chances to come out with a three-all draw. shot there from John Higgins and all Stephen can do here is just throw this black around the table. John hold the white there on the cushion. Might just, just push it to the top rail actually. Oh hang on. Well I'm not overly sure about that one. This is a chance here for John to steal this final frame and as you've just mentioned Clive, Steve had, Steve had two great chances on the pink. This for 4-2 then. We have two great chances, you say, Mike, to draw the match at three all. But it's Higgins who takes the frame on the black to win 4 2. Two wins from two matches for him. Um, I'm doing an exclusive in the paper, uh, waiting to confirm that this afternoon, um, and I've just dropped my books down to a, a lawyer, QC, um, this morning. Uh, I'm absolutely devastated with what's happened here. Um, but, um, you know, we're going to cut it short. I'm going to be with the QC on Friday morning, and uh, we're going to look at the whole, whole picture um, and start making some big holes in, uh, in their no, their, they've got no facts. So you totally disagree with the evidence they've developed? Oh. That's just unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, Eleven months of this is uh, is outrageous, you know. Um, the kids are getting the kids are getting picked on at school, and uh, it's it's uh, totally outrageous what I've been put through. Very, very, very angry man. Um, I've been a very angry man for eleven months. Um, so uh, you know, I don't think it's much anger this morning. Um, you saw me this morning as I drove off. Um, you know, so we'll just wait and see what happens. I'll, I'll be I'll be making an official uh, statement with McCusey on Friday morning. We be playing snooker again, do you think? Um, yeah, yeah, God, yeah, yeah. That's all I know. Um, game that I love. Um, so uh, you know, we'll just see what happens. Got to keep it sweet, short, short, sweet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I just ask one question? I mean, there was seven different allegations of, of Max Fitching, and, and there were quite strong arguments that you put forward at the time. No, no, I had no, I, I had no lawyer to represent me, and uh, if I'd have, I think, I believe that if I'd had a lawyer in there, then uh, there'd be a different outcome completely. So, uh, you know, uh, dirty pictures being painted, and uh, the exclusive in the paper for the truth and facts that, um, that I've been through in the last 11 months, uh, going back to when I was arrested in 2010, um, will paint the true picture and the true light and uh, what's happened. Um, total outrageous how this has happened to me. I just don't believe it. Um, I've got four young children and, uh, you know, it's just absolutely outrageous. Can yeah. I just ask you, the 12-year ban? Go on. It, how, I mean, how big a blow is oh, it's, it's over, it's over isn't it? Career's over. And for your, your family? I can't play. My dad could beat me if I'm 50, do you know what I mean? That would beat me. Yeah, Just said to me, old man, there, he'd, he'd be, a, he'd have, he'd have a better chance on the tour at 50 than I would. But I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared to talk anymore. All I'll say is that, um, being 50 years old and trying to travel around the world like Steve Davis and Jimmy White. God bless. I love Jimmy White. He's a big pal of mine. Um, people's champion. He'll always be a people's champion in my eyes. And uh, God bless him. He does extremely well because he loves the game like I love the game. It's all we know. So, um, situation is, you know, Jimmy is, is an exceptional player. Um, you know, I've got the talent, and uh, and you know, I don't practice as much as most of them. But um, you know, Jimmy's a big pal of mine, and he's been in contact with me. And I know him a true friends are now. So uh, I'll leave it there, guys. Right? Anger to that ex players. Have, so have out of I'll, I'll make a statement, like I said, guys. I'll make a statement on Friday, and that statement will be fact, and uh, the story will be in the paper, and that'll be fact. 
and uh, that will paint a different picture than what, uh, what Will Snook had done to me. We appreciate your time. See you later. Thank you. Stephen Lee's day began with a trip to his lawyers to learn his fate. Oh, yeah. Have you heard yet? No. Not heard. Just off. No. Do you know when you're back to here? Um, I'm just off Seymour Lloyd now. Okay. A few hours later, he was banned for 12 years and ordered to pay £40,000 in costs. In explaining his punishment, Adam Lewis QC said Lee did not strike him as a cynical cheat and described him as a weak man under financial pressure. But he said Lee was in a vulnerable position who succumbed to temptation. After evidence presented to the tribunal of extraordinary betting by groups associated with Lee, the Independence chairman said it was unlikely Lee was a prime mover or instigator of the fixes and that a lifetime ban was not proportionate or necessary to deter. Lee returned home and maintained his innocence. I'm absolutely devastated. Um... Absolutely devastated. Uh, I've done nothing wrong. Totally innocent from this. Earlier this month, an independent tribunal found that Lee had fixed matches or frames in four different competitions. Lee lost three matches in the 2008 Malta Cup. In the UK Championships in the same year, he won both matches in question but lost the first frame. He lost to Mark Selby in the 2009 China Open and a match against Ryan Day in the World Championships where Lee lost 10-4. Snooker's governing body had pushed for a lifetime ban, but the man who led the investigation said he was satisfied with the 12-year punishment. I think it sends a very clear message uh, that people who get involved in match fixing are, are going to face severe penalties, and, and in Stephen Lee's case, this could well end his, any, him having any involvement in snooker. Lee later confirmed he would appeal the sanction. I'm going to be with the QC on Friday morning, and uh, we're going to look at the whole, whole picture. Um, and start making some big holes in, uh, in their no, their, they've got no facts. So you totally disagree with the evidence they've developed? Oh, that's just unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, 11 months of this is, uh, is outrageous. The Crown Prosecution Service say they have not been asked to review their decision last year not to bring a criminal case. 12 months ago they said there was insufficient evidence to bring a case before a jury. Lee was found guilty on the balance of probabilities in this civil case with a lower standard of proof and is now banned until October 2024. Brian Swanson, Sky Sports.